let's 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 begin. Uh, so these are some things I started to tell uh, Michael Schwartz. I went back uh, as okay. As I mentioned last time, right? What we're trying to do, we're trying to figure out the simple thing that we're trying to figure out is what was the precise seder hayom for the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippurim. And what I mean, the simple thing that is, that should be a straight, you know, one, two, three, four, five, whatever, however many numbers or bullet points that he do, does these things one, you know, in order. What we know as we've gone through the Mishnah, we know that there are things that he does along the way. So for example, he has to um, go to the mikvah and wash his hands and legs uh, each time he changes clothes on this day. So normally we learned back in Perch Sushi that anybody who goes into the uh, Azara, I think that's what's showing now, right? This is from Perak Gimel Mishnah Gimel. Ein adam nichnas la'azara la'avoda afilu tahor ad she'id bol. So this was something that was true for everybody. Um, and as the Bartanur points out, la'avoda la'avdafka, it was any time a person went into the azara for whatever reason, they had to tahor. And uh, uh, the um, even if he was tahor, uh, so on this day, which this is what's different about this about the kohen gadol and yom kippur from any other kohen or any other person who goes into the Azara, any other person who goes into the Azara has to tavel. But today, the Kohen Gadol is going to do five tevilot and ten kidushe yadayim v'raglayim. He's going to wash his hands and legs ten times. So as I mentioned last time, one of the things that we're trying to keep in mind is uh, when he does these, when are, how, did, how do these work out in terms of the timetable? And one of the issues that comes up about this is the order in which he does the uh, initial Kidu Shaddai Buraglayim. So I'm just going to remind us. So the next Mishnah here, Mishnah Dalit, uh, says, They spread out a sheet of linen between him and between the people. Pashat yarad v'taval alav v'nistapeng yevil lo v'gdei zahav v'avash v'kidei sh'yadav v'raklav. So he took his clothes off. In other words, he took, he was behind this, uh, this uh, sheet. And uh, he stripped down and he went and tabled. And he mentioned, let go. We mentioned quite a long time ago that this initial tevila was immediately before he got into the Azara, because he would have to do the tevila before going in. And um, then he would tavel, and then he'd get up and dry off, and then they would bring him the big day zahav, then he would get dressed, and then he would, and after that, he would wash his hands and legs. So in this first time that he's putting on the big day Zahav to start his Avodah for the day, he doesn't do Kiddush Yadayim Reglayim before he puts on the big day Zahav, only after. So that's going to be the first Kiddush Yadayim Reglayim. Now I've marked this as the Tevila Rishona. And I'm going to make a separate counting for the Kiddushe Yadayim V'raglayim. But now, if we think about this, so he's going to do five to be lot. And how is he going to end up with 10 Kiddushe Yadayim V'raglayim? So if you, you know, oh, so he's going to do two Kiddushe 
yadayim v'ragayim for each time he goes to the mikvah. Okay, but we see that that's not how it starts off. He starts off only with one because he doesn't do kiddush yadayim v'ragayim here before he puts on the big day zahav, only after. So he's going to be missing one. So the missing one, not to give you know, not to give away the ending, but the missing one, as it were, the tenth one, he's going to do at the very end, which which is in our parak in parak shvi'i. But uh, when we go down a little bit further in this parak, um, we'll see. This is we. Here is where you'll remember we have a machloka between Rav Chachamim and Rabbi Meir. Let me just remind us of what this is, and then I'll go to the I'll go to the, my color coded chart that I started to make. Um, okay, so this is the beginning of the day. He does this tevilah. He does kiddush yadayim for agayim, and then it says hevil lo at the tamid. So he starts to do the korban tamid, uh, and this goes into a little bit of detail about that. And then at Mishnah, hey, Ketor Chal Shachai Takre Vabbein Dam Le'evarim, because in other words, at this point, when he's doing the Korban Tamid, so he does all the things that Kohanim would normally do on a normal day that we learned in Masechet Tamid, right? So we won't go through all of that again right now. Uh, but it talks about um, Torah. And then, when he, net, when he finishes these avodot for the Korban Tamid, uh, Mishnavav says, Heviyu Levet Parva. So they brought him to the Beit Parva because now he's going to do the second Tevilah. And just to remind you that, that now the second Tevilah is going to be done in a mikvah that's actually in the Azara, that was in Beit Parva. Uh, the Shaitan. That's why the Mishnah says the Koda Shaitan, meaning that um, this was um, uh, this was in the Azara. And now it says Kidesh Yadav Raglav Ufashat. So the first thing he does before he takes his clothes off is he does Kiddush Yadai Raglai. And then he takes his clothes off. But then the Mishnah interjects, Rabbi Meir Amir, Pashat, Kidesh Yadav Raglav. First he takes his clothes off, and then he washes his hands and legs. So this, this is a seemingly minor difference, but, uh, but it is a difference that we'll get back to it a little bit uh, later. Uh, but then the Mishnah continues after, so at that point, after that point, Yarad v'tzaval. So then he goes down, he does the Tzvilah Shniya, he gets up, he dries himself off, Evilo big day lavan, and then he puts on the big day lavan, Navash v'kidesh yadav raglav. In other words, this part of the Mishnah here, uh, Yarad v'tzaval and so forth, that's according both to the Rabbi to the Chachamim and according to Rabbi Meir. The different, the machoka between Rabbi Meir and the Chachamim is, do you do the Kiddush Yadayim Baraglayim after, after you've removed the clothes or before you removed your clothes? So that's just something to keep in mind when we start, when we, at, at some point we'll go back and we'll do the count for the Kiddush Yadayim Baraglayim. In terms of keeping up with the Tvilot, so here we have the Tvilah Rishona, and then he's doing the Korban Tamid. Now you'll notice here, it only talks about him doing the, the Korban Tamid and the attendant Avodot that are done in the morning, like the Ktoret and the um, Nora and so forth. Uh, it doesn't talk about the other Korbanot that he may or may not have been doing at that time. That's the sugya that we're doing now. That is, on this day, he also had to do korbanot musaf, in addition to the korbanot that he has to do that uh, to take the blood into the Kodesh and the Kodesh HaKadoshim. So, uh, 
the Mishnah here is at this point though, it does go in the Mishnah Zion, it does go into the things that he does in the Big Day Lavan, which are particular to Yom HaKippurim. And that's when uh, uh, that's when uh, Balo Etzel Paro, he, he takes the Par HaChatat that was for the Kohanim and and he does the avodah for the parachatat, etc. And then you know we had these digressions because we talked about um, uh, we talked about some of these other side things like the people that we remember the shavach and people we remember like night. But here he does the par, he does the vidui, and uh, then. They, and then he gets ready to do the kalpi, right? To do the gorolot for the siirim, and then it digresses because the, it, it talks about the uh, how um, uh, Ben Gamla had made the kalpi, uh, not the kalpi itself, but the gorolot. He made them out of gold, and he's remembered with sheva. And then we go into all these people who remember the sheva, and people who remember the knight. Until we would get to Perak Rivi. I didn't actually bring up Perak Rivi here, but hold on a second. I think this is actually a good quick review, so we should do this. Uh, just a second. I'm just going to do it from here. I'm, I'm, going, I'm almost ready with the with my version of the mission of the way I lay it out for the whole Masech, and I'll send that as soon as that's done. Right, so then we remember Perak Rivi'i is where he is Tarak Bakalpi. This is where he chooses the uh, the Sirim based on the Goralot. And then uh, he puts a Lashon Shilzuhurit on the head of the Sir Hamishtaleach, and then uh, he takes the one that's going to be slaughtered, puts a lashon chelzurit around its neck. He does the vidui on the sir, uh, sir hatat, the sir lashem. And then he slaughters it and he takes its blood and, um, and so forth. And then it, then it talks about the Ketoret, that is, this is the Ketoret that he's going to take into the Kodesh HaKodeshim. Um, right, okay. So then the Ketoret, go, we go into more detail in Mishnah in Perak how he did the Ketoret. He takes the Kaf and the Machta, and he takes the Ketoret and goes in, and we talked about going into the Kodesh Kodeshim and how that was laid out. Um, and then he takes the blood from the Par and does the sprinkling. And um, I think I misspoke because I think I said he slaughtered the seer, but he just, he, he do, he do, what he did was the second vidui of the par, but the first par has two viduyim. Uh, so he did, he did the second vidui on the par and then he slaughtered the par and he gave the blood to be uh, stirred up so that it wouldn't congeal. At this point, after he does the ketorid, he goes back, he gets the blood that has been stirred from the par hachata, and then he uh, and then he brings it in and he does the sprinkling inside the kodesh kodeshim. Then he goes out <coughs> and shechts the seir lashem, and after that. Um, he takes that inside and he sprinkles the blood of the seer in the Kodesh Kodeshim. And then he go, goes and uh, does the sprinkling inside the Kodesh with both of the bloods, Keneged HaParochet. And then he does the sprinkling of the, 
those bloods on the Mizbeach. Uh, right. And here the Mishnah tells us that he had to do all these things in order. If he does them out of order, then he didn't do anything. Uh, okay, we can skip that. This is just a quick discussion. Okay, then Herak Shishi, the beginning of the parak, is dealing mostly with the Sira Mishtaleach. So at this point, so remember, he, this is now during this, after the second tevilah, and he's doing all of this avodah, wearing the big day lavan. These are all things he's doing in the big day lavan. So then he does the sira mishtalech, he does the vidui, they send it off. And then we talk about exactly what happened with the sira mishtalech um, until, until they, uh, Get, we get to the end of Herak Vav, Amru the Kohen Gadol, he gives Seir the Midbar. Then they tell the Kohen Gadol at what point the Seir got to the Midbar. That is, so that he can um, continue on with the rest of the day. And then we talked about how, how would they have known. So there were different ways that they may or may have known. Okay. So, then we come to the Perak Shri'i, which is the Perak we've been spending a lot of time on now. And now he does the Kriyat Torah at the same time that the carcasses from the Sir Chatat and the, the, the Sir Lashen, the Sir Chatat and the Par Chatat, whose blood he had sprinkled in the Kodesh and the Kodesh, Kodesh, the Kodeshim, those are being burnt outside of Yerushalayim. Right, so remember, because we said somebody, whoever's watching him uh, do the laning could not have seen the burning of the seir and the chatat and vice versa. Second, the other thing that we mentioned, and I mentioned this last time, is um, the other thing that he will yet have to take care of is, are the emurim, the fats, from the from the par and the seir, so that was in the end of Parak Vav Mishnah Zayin. By the way, till par v'seir ha misrafin. This would be after the seir mishdalech was was sent out. So at, at that point, he would go to this par and the seir, and then he would tear them open and take out their emurim and put them in a magase. He put them in this clee to hold them until the time that he was going to burn them on the Mizbeach. And here it says, he burned them, uh, you know, he offered them onto the Mizbeach, but this wasn't actually the moment that he, that he offered them on the Mizbeach. And again, just to remind you, you can't say, that he brought them on the Mizbeach now, the Ham the Big Day Lavan Hulabush. At this point, he's still wearing the Big Day Lavan. The Daina Lavli Grota Parasha, the Big Day Lavan. He still has to read the Parsha in Big Day Lavan, which of course is Lav Dafka, because as we know from the beginning of the next parak, he could either be wearing the Big Day Lavan or he could have been wearing one of his own Bigadim. But nonetheless, um, so how do we know that, that this would not yet be done? It's actually because in the order that it's brought in the Psukim, you'll remember at the point when he, the, the, the point where it says in the Pasuk that, the, uh, that the, those are going to be burnt, it's later. Well, I'll show you in the Pasuk. So you put them in the Mages, in order to be maktir later, when their time comes, the acharshi bov yobash big day zahav. After he tavels and puts on the big day zahav, which we will yet see. Okay, so that's just to remind us of that. Just a second, we bring up one other, one other thing. What I realize is I'm doing this. 
Um, there's no simple way of doing. That. <laughs> I said this is simple, but it's not. It's not entirely simple. You have all these things you need to keep in mind about the um, the emurim. Um, the Emurim are alluded to in the Pasuk here. This is Parashat Achrimot. In this Pasuk Katei, that's an allusion to the Emurim of the Chatat of the Par and the Chatat of the Seir that he's going to bring on the Mizpeach. And according to this, this is not going to be until much later because this comes after uh, he, after the second time he puts on the big day Laban and uh, it goes in to remove the uh, the kaf and the machtar from the, from the Kodesh HaKodeshim. So we'll come back to that. And he also has to, so the, the Haktarata Emurim comes um, after he does the Shnei Elim. So that's why Bartanura is saying in the Mishnah, that the Mishnah can't mean that he did the Haktarata Morim at that moment. It just means that he got ready to do them. Okay, but now back to our order. So now we're in Perak Zion, uh, where we are. And uh, he does the Kriyat HaTorah, and he says the Brachot. And in the meantime, the Par of the Seir are being burnt. And this is when we come here, Mishnah Gimel, this is where it says, if he had been wearing big day boots, then Kidesh Yadav Raglav. And if he hadn't been wearing the big day boots, he would have done that already. But Pashat Yarad B'Tabal, this is going to be the next, uh, the next Bila. Hold on a second. Here we go. This is in my version where I've highlighted them. So this is the Tvilashli sheet. So now he's going to get out of the big day Laban. And then they're going to bring him the big day Zahav. And then it says, et elo et el So he comes out now and he does the his aisle and the aisle of the ah. So what just to remind us, what what was his aisle and what was the aisle of the Am? Where's that mentioned? Where are the Shnei Elim from? Okay, so this is why I have my charts. <laughs> um, hold on. Okay, this is a this is a general listing of all the korbanot of the day. So we we have the tamid shel shachar, and then in achrei mot. We have the, the, this is, I just brought them in the order that they mentioned the Pasuk, Parva Ayel of the Kohen, Seir Ayel of the Am. Right, so this, and we'll change the order because he does the Par and the Seir and sprinkles their blood inside. But the Shnei Elin, he does now, after, after he's done all of the avodah with the par and the seir and the seir hamishdaleach, which he did in the big day lavan, then he's going to change into big day zahav, and at this point he'll do the elim. According that's a, that's the way we're seeing it in the mishnah. Um, just a second. No, not that one. Not that one. Just one of those. 
this one. Um, okay. So in the big day boots, correct, he did shed up right up, the shot your rod that's of all love and his top egg, he did the big days a half of a bash, we could they shed up right love. And then what? The Atzava Sa'at Elovet El Ha'am. At this point, he goes out and does these two Elim, and these two Elim are the Elim of Achremot. So they're special for Yom HaKippurim, but he does them in the Big Day Zahav. The only time he's going to wear the Big Day Lavan is when he goes into the Kodesh HaKodeshim. So he needs it for doing the sprinkling of the blood in the Kodesh HaKodeshim. And he also wears them for do the, to do the sprinkling of the blood in the Kodesh. And then, and then the, la, the next time he wears the Big Day Lavan, it's just going to be to do one thing, which is to go into the Kodesh HaKodeshim and remove the Kaf and the Machan. But at this point, he puts on the Big Day Zahav. This is after the third Tadila. Puts on the Big Day Zahav. And then he brings the Elim at Shivat Vasim Timinim B'nei Shana. This is from the Korban Musaf. Divrei Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Akiva Omer, Im Tamid Shal Shachar Hayu Kredim. And the, the, the Shiva, presumably means the Shivat Vasim were brought with the Tamid Shal Shachar. Now, this is the first we're hearing of that in the Mishnah, right? We went back and we did a little review in Parak Shlishi where he does the first tefillah and he does the Qurban Tamid, you might have thought that the Mishnah would have brought it, brought it there. It's bringing it here. Now, why it's bringing it here and not there, I think it has to do with the fact that uh, partly because it's machloket about when it's done, because according to Rabbi Eliezer, the um, the, the uh, Shivat Kvasim, in other words, the Musaf, was not done in the morning. It was done now, according to Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Eliezer, it was done now. Uh, I think there are other reasons as well that it's brought here. But in any event, in Tamid Shal Shachar Ayu Krevin, Ufar HaOlad Asiyan Asad Dechutz, which are also from the Korban Musaf, Ayu Krevin in Tamid Shal Ben Harabai. The Bikiva basically breaks up the Korban Musaf. Some of it is in the morning and some, some of it is in the evening and the late, later in the day. And that's the sugya that we're doing now in the Gemara is to better understand these shitot because as we pointed out and as the Gemara points out, they're both incomplete. They're both leaving out Korbanot that we also have not yet mentioned. So we still need to figure those, those things out. But just to complete the, the immediate cycle here, the next Mishnah is the next Tbila. After he does, uh, after he does that Avodah, that's in Mishnah Gimel, then Kidesh Yadav Raglav, Vashad Virad Vitaval Vialav and Istapeg, Vilo Bitelavan Vilavash, Kidesh Yadav Raglav, and then Nichnas Lotzi et Akafi et Machpa. So he puts on the Big Day Lavan basically for one purpose, to go into the Kodesh HaKodeshim and to retrieve the Kaf and the Machtab that he used to bring in the coal and the incense. And so then he does the fifth, and this will be the last Tvilah. And what does he do now? He's going to finish off doing the rest of the Avodah that's associated with the Korban Tamid Shal Ben Arbaim. What about the Korban Tamid Shal Ben Arbaim itself? You'll notice it's not mentioned here. It wasn't mentioned uh, here except that, except for Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva says that the rest of the Musaf is done with the Tamid Shal Ben Ha'arbayim. So when exactly was that done? Presumably, then, that would have been done now. These things would have been done now. Uh, now, I'm sorry, now is not a clear term. It would have been done during the third, when he has the big days, aha, 
after the third tvila. So remember, we have five tvilot. One, three, and five are bikdei zahav. And then the second and the third are uh, tvilot are for the bikdei laban. So this is the third tvila. And so he's going to do these korbanot. And, and we'll look at my chart in a second. I'll show you. So the only thing that he still needs to do, though, he still needs to finish off the avodah of, uh, that's associated with the tamid shaben arbaim. So for that, he after he's taken out the kaf of machta in the big day lavan, he changes into the big day zahav, and then he goes into the kodesh into the heichal to be maktir ktoret and to do the nora, and that. According to the Tana here, that's the last thing, that's the last avodah that he does for the day, is to uh, to light the menorah. And then kidesh yadav raglav fashat. So notice here, all he does after that is he washes his hands and legs. That is, he doesn't have to tubble and but he's going to wash his hands and legs one more time. So that, as I was telling, I don't know if everybody was here, but I was telling Michael Schwartz, but I think everybody was here. I'm a little bit confused about where we started. I mentioned when we looked back at the in Perek Shlishi, when he first puts on the Big Day Zahav at the first Tviva, he doesn't do Kiddush Yadai Vraglayim before he puts on the big day zahav. And so, but we saw that for every other tvila, he does kiddush yadayim raglayim before and after the tvila. How, how does he get a total of 10 kiddush yadayim raglayim? So beginning with the, uh, with the second tvila, each time he changes his clothes, he does kiddush yadayim raglayim before he, uh, uh, he uh, after he takes his clothes off and before he puts on, uh, before he tubbles and puts on the, the uh, whatever because he's changing into. In other words, Tvila two, three, four, and five, as we see, um, each one of them is associated with two Kidushe Yadayim Bregayim. Two, three, four, and five. The first tvila, there's only one kiddush yadai brachlayim. So how do we get nine? We have, we, we we're, we're as it were missing one. So the tenth one is here. The tenth one is after he's done the last avodah of the day in the big day zahav. He's going to do one more kiddush yadai brachlayim and then take off the big day zahav and then put on his regular clothes, and that's going to be the end of the day. Okay. This is, you know, every week when I'm, I've been trying to do this, I keep thinking these are going to be um, quicker summaries, but I see this, there's no quick way of doing this. I, at this point, I am gonna show you this, uh, my, my color-coded chart. Um, which I will, I will send this to everybody also, but I am going to, as Michael Schwartz said, like there's no end to these things. So I, I am going to try to finish this off. This chart is more or less done. This is the sheet of Rebbe Akiva. And this covers not every single thing that he does for the whole day, but it covers all of the korbanot plus the, uh, Hotzat uh, Kafu Machta and Haktarata uh, in Murin and the and and the Ktoret and the Neirot. In other words, it, it is going to cover some other things. Eventually, going to put more things in and try to organize it a little bit better. But this is this is in fact the quick summary of what I just showed you, according to Rebbe Akiva. So, Tzvilari Shonai puts on the big day Zahav. He does the Tamid Shel Shachar. But according to Rabbi Kiba, also, even though this wasn't brought in the Mishnah and Perak Gimel, this is also when he does the par 
and the Shivat HaKvasim of the Korban Musaf. So that's a par that's in the Ola, not the par Hadad. It's the par that's in the Ola of the Korban Musaf. And the Shivat HaKvasim, which are also brought as an Ola, and that's part of the Musaf. He does all of that after the first Tvila while wearing the Big Day Zahav. Then he tavels and the, he puts on the Big Day Laban. And that's when he does the par and the Seir Chatat. And I, you know, here also, I mean, eventually I'll put in something for the Seir Mishtaleach. This is also when he sends off the Seir Mishtaleach. But for right now, I'm just concentrating on the Korbanot that he's doing. Then he tavled again, does the third Tvila. And at this point, he's going to do the Sirana Sebachutz, which is a Korban Musaf, and the Shnei Elim, right, with the better mention of Parshat Achimot of Yom Kippurim. And this is also when he's going to do Hakdarat Emurim. He's going to take the Emurim from the previous Tvila, as it were, from the Par and the Seir, and he'll put them to burn on the Mizbeach. And he'll also do the last Korban of the day that he's going to do is the Tamid Shal Ben Harbain, because that's always the last Korban of the day. Then he does the fourth Tvila, he puts on the Big Day Lavan again, and he does Hotzaat Kafu Machta. And then he's going to do the last Tvila, and he'll do the Ketorot and the Neirot. That's according to Rabbi Akiva. And this, this is uh, the unfinished chart, but basically the chart, according to Rabbi Eliezer, the way the Gemara is going to bring it down, which is Rabbi Eliezer, according to Tana de Be Shmuel. There's another Rabbi Eliezer, which I threw in here, which is Rabbi Eliezer according to the Tosefta. And uh, it's different than the Rabbi Yezer of Tanit Bey Shmuel. I'm not going to go into it now, but when you get my charts, you can look at it. You can see the differences. Um, okay. Part of, part of the, this process of going through all these things and keeping them in order, order in our heads and so forth, the charts, I think, are helpful and all of these things, but the truth is, like so many other things in halacha, it sinks in after a while. Like after you go through this dozens and dozens and dozens of times, it starts to sink in. One of the things, though, that I wanted, to, I just want to point out at this juncture before we go back to the Gemara is this, I think this does give us more insight into the uh, complexity of the work that the Kohen Gadol did on Yom Kippur. Now, of course, all of these things would have been decided, but, you know, in any given Yom Kippur, whatever the halacha was, he was going to do them in a particular order. But there are a lot of things to do. And so he is, you know, he's helped along the way. Other Kohanim are going to be there. And even if he would be a great Tamil Chacham, like Shimon HaTzadik, we could also understand that, um, you know, it will be helpful to have other people around him that help him at each stage. Because he, at any given stage, he has to do, you know, all these different things. It's a lot to keep in mind. So we, according to the, our account, we have 15 korbanot, but of course, in addition to the korbanot, he also had to bring the, you know, it breaks down because the korban tamid, he had to bring the evarim onto the mizpeach, he had, then he had to cut it up, and all the things that were associated with that. And then nasechet tamid, we learned about uh, doing the ktoret, the regular ktoret in the morning and the ktoret in the afternoon. He had to bring chavitin every day, as the which of the chavitei kohen gadol. There, in other words, all these things had to be done, and the, and the uh, atavata neirot. So, really, it was an enormous amount of work. One of the reasons I'm going to emphasize this now is because we'll see in the Gemara that um, uh, 
is a machloket, which we're coming to in a moment, about um, when he brought the Shibat Kvasim. So what we have now, according to the way we've been learning for the moment, right, according to Rabbi Akiva, the Shivat Kvasim were all brought along with the Tamid Shel Shachar. But we'll see, and actually there's a machloket in, of Talmidim of Rabbi Akiva who held that it was split up, that some were brought in the morning and, and one, either six were brought in the morning and one is brought in the afternoon or one was brought in the morning and six were brought in the afternoon. And the machloket is related to this idea of what, what we think the physical state and the mental state of the Kohen Gadol was, which we'll see now. I think this is what we're up to in the Quran. Okay. So, yeah. So this is the Gemara that we were looking at last time. So this is the Gemara on the Mishnah in Perak Zion about um, when he does the Tevilah and uh, changes it now into the big day Zahav. And we have the Machoket in the Mishnah. Uh, what happens when he puts on the big day Zahav? Now it's, it's, this is the second time of the day he's putting on big day Zahav. So he goes out and does Elove et El Ha'an and Shivat Kvasim Taminim, Divrei Rabbi Yazer, Rabbi Kiva Meir and Tamid Shashacha Yukravin, Ufar Ha'ola, Vesir Nase Bechutz, and Tamid Shabbain Arabai. So the Gemara here asked, how do we understand Rabbi Akiva when he says in Tamid Shashacha Yukravin that the Shivat Kvasim that were brought with the Tamid Shashachar, Ufar Ha'olas, does he mean that the Shivat Kvasim that Rabbi Eliezer mentioned were brought with the Tamid Shashachar? Ufar Ha'olas, Usir Anaseh Bechutz in Tamid Shabbain Arbaim, and the Par Ha'ola and the Sir that was the Sir Chatat of the Musaf, those were brought with Tamid Shabbain Arbaim, or maybe he means in Tamid Shashachar you craving that the Shivat Kvasim were brought in the morning with Tamid Shashachar, uh, I'm so with the Shivat Kvasim were brought in the morning with Tamid Shashachar, Ufar Ha'ola Bahadayu, and the and the the par of the Musaf were brought with them. Usir Hanaseh Bechutz in Tamid Shabbain Arbaim. So I don't know according to the way according to the Girsa that they had in the Mishnah was. According to Rabbi Akiva, was the par ha'ola, which is the par of the musaf, was that brought in the morning with the shivat kvasim with the tamid shashachar, or were the shivat kvasim brought in the morning with tamid shashachar, but the par ha'ola was brought with the sihana sebechutz ben harbaim. The two par ha'ola, the Rabbi Eliezer de Shayare, the par ha'ola, which is the par of the musaf. He left that out. What, what's his opinion? When was that done? Was it done in the morning or was it done in the afternoon? Right? We still also have to know whether according to Rabbi Eliezer or whether according to Rabbi Akiva, when were the Emurei Chatat brought, right? So the Emurei Chatat, again, were the uh, fats from the par and the seer chatat, whose blood was sprinkled inside. So we need to know all these things again, because when we look at the psukim, we see a certain order. And now we see there's this machloket, but the, so first of all, there's a machloket about the order because we have to mesh the korbanot, korbanot musaf and the korbanot tamid with the with Parshat Achorei Melch, we have to put them together in some kind of an order. And, um, and also because this Mishnah, our Mishnah, the way it's read, it's leaving out certain important points. We don't know whether according to Rebbe Elezi or according to Rebbe Akiva, when were the Emu Rechatat brought? And those are mentioned in the Torah. We know that they have to be brought. 
So when were they brought? Amarava lo mashkachta, lo mashkecha la mitakamta, ele ole Rebbe Yezer de Tanud Be'i Shmuel, ole Rebbe Kiva Kedato Sefta. So the only way that we can put the Mishnah together as a matanta, in other words, into a, uh, into a uh, proper Mishnah, into a proper uh, understanding, is if I take the version of Rabbi Yezid that was learned in the Beit Midrash of Shmuel, and if I take the version of Rabbi Kiva that was learned in the Tosafta. Again, because both of them, both of their shitot are not complete in the Mishnah. And also I have this question about how to read Rabbi Akiva. The town of the Beishmuel. So now what does he mean specifically? So he explains that it says in the in the in the Bright that was learned in uh, the Beit Midrash of Shmuel as follows Rabbi Ezer Omer Yatsa Vyasa Elov El Ha'am. So this Yatsa, he goes out and he does his ayel and the ayel of the people. When is that? So that's picking up on the Lashon of our Mishnah, right? After he does this tvila, right, he does the, um, uh, the third tvila. It says, V'yatsa v'yatsa et elov et el ha'am, v'yatshivat kvasim t'nimim b'nei shana, v'yivrei rabbi Eliezer. So now in Tana Debe Shmuel, it's picking up on that same lashon. This is like a, uh, an expansion of, that, of our Mishnah. Yatsa v'yatsa elov v'el ha'am, v'emurei chatat. So it adds in that this is also when he does the emurei chatat. Of a par ha'ola, again, it adds in par ha'ola, which is missing in our Mishnah, but in this version of the Baita, it's here. Par ha'ola, the Shivat Kvasim, the Sir Hanase Bachutz, in Tamid Shabbain Ha'arbai. So that's, that's this chart. That's this chart. So after the Tzvilash Lishit, he's wearing the Big Day Zahav. So Rabbi Yezer, according to Tana de Veshmuel, says, at this point, he does Elov El Ha'am. And I should add in here, which I, as I said, I still haven't finished, but the other thing we'll add in here is Emurei uh, Chatat. And then after that, he's going to do the par and the shivat kasim, which are musaf, and the siran asabahuts, all in other words, all of the korbanot musaf. These are all of the korbanot musaf. He's going to do that, im tamid shalbein ha'arbaim, which he's going to do them next, right before he does tamid shalbein ha'arbaim. This chart is the chart of Rabbi Yaz according to Tani de Beishmuel. That's what the Gemara, this is what the Gemara means uh, right now in this sugya that we're, that we're doing. And what's Rabbi Akiva de Tosefta? Rabbi Akiva de Tosefta might be the Tanya, Rabbi Akiva Omer, Par Ha'ola, the Shivat Kvasim. In Tamid Shel Shachar Hayukri. The Par of the Ola, which is the Musaf, Shivat Kvasim, which is also the Musaf, those were brought with Tamid Shel Shachar. Shenemar Milvad Olata Bokia, Asher Li Olata Tamid. We'll talk about that proof text in a moment. But that's proof text is the basis for Rabbi Akiva's Psak. Yacharkach, afterwards, avodat hayom. What does he mean here after? So in other words, according to Rabbi Akiva, according to Rabbi Akiva, the, what did he do in the morning? He did the korban tamid, 
And then he did these parts of the Korbanot Musaf. He did the par and the shivat kvasim. Afterwards, he did the service for the day. What does he mean, avodat hayom? What's avodat hayom in this context? It would be the avodat that's specific to Yom Kippur. So, yeah, and to say it a little bit more uh, closely, because that's a, the way you're saying this, the way I've said it in the past, but let's be more midaktek. It's the avodat that's uh, that's done in the Kodesh HaKodeshim and the Kodesh that he's going to do in the Big Day Lavan. Because also the Shnei Elim, for example, is also Avodat of Yom HaKippurim, but he does them, but that's, that's, um, uh, that's not necessarily, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about Avodat HaYom, specifically the Avodat that's done Lifnim V'Lifnai V'Lifnim. Kodesh, 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 but yes. Kach, so after he, so that would be done with the big day Lavan. Kach, that would be done in big day Lavan. Kach, Sir Hanasegachutz, which is a, again, this is, that's the last part of the Korban Mutsaf. So this is going to be later when he changes back into the big day Zahav. Shinamar Sirizim Echad Chatan Milvad Chatat Kipurim, and after that, Yecharkach Elov El Ha'am, again, still in the, still wearing the big days Ahav, Yecharkach Emule Chatat, right, that he has to burn on his back from the Parvis year Chatat, Yecharkach Tamid Shel Ben Ha'Avayim. So that's my that's my Rabbi Akiva chart. Right, so this is the chart. This be the chart. So this is what Rabbi Kiva is saying. After the first tefillah, he's wearing the big day zahav. He does the korban tamid of every day. He does the par ha'ola and the shivat kvasim of the musaf, along with korban tamid. In other words, at that time, after he did the korban tamid, he's going to do these these uh, korbanot musaf. Then he does avodat hayom. What's avodat hayom? He wears the big day lavan, and he does the par the seir lechatat and sprinkles their blood, etc. And also, not on the chart, he'll set up the sira mishdaleach. And as we reviewed today, after at a certain point after he, he sent off the sira mishdaleach. He's going to rip open the par and the seir and remove the emurin and put them in the magais to be brought, to be burnt uh, on the Mizbeach. Then he'll do another tefillah, he'll put back on the big day Zahav and he'll do sir anasebechut, which is the rest of the Musaf, and then elo ve'el ha'am. And at that point is when he'll do the Hakdarat Emurim, right? That he had taken out of the par and the, the Seir Lechatat. That's when he's going to bring them. And then the last Korban that he'll do is going to be the Korban Tamid. So that's Rabbi Akiva of the Tosefta. Let's look at Rashi here. Rabbi Akiva Omer says, but Rabbi Akiva lo gasini atzavi asa. If you think about that, you'll understand what Rashi means, but I'm not going to take the time right now. So according to Rabbi Akiva, the Tosefta, par ha'ola v'shivat kvasim tamid shel shachar ha'yukrevi. And Rashi says, il gisha rishona. The first time that he's getting dressed, which of course he's wearing the big day zahav, and why are those done with the tamid shel shachar? Why are the why are these korbanot musaf done with the tamid shel shachar? Shinemar b'musfein kol haregalim. It says regarding the musafim of all of the regalim, 
מלבד עולת הבוקר. עלמא מוספים אם עולת הבוקר נעשית בסמוך להם ללמוד יום הכיפורים מהם. So let, let's remind ourselves of that, uh, of that pasuk. So, and, and this will also help us to understand the machloket between Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Akiva. So when we look in Parshat Pinchas, and we look at Parshat Musafim. So we start off, of course, with, uh, before we get to the Musafim, we have the Korban Tamid, Tzavet ben Israel, etc. And then I have the Musaf of Shabbat, that's the first Musaf. Um, and I'm just going to point, I don't, I, I'll just point this out. So, Yom HaShabbat, Shnei Kfasim B'nei Shanat Yimimu, Shnei Yisrael Mitzvah B'nei Shanat Yimimu, Shnei Yisrael Olat Shabbat B'Shabbatos, so you have to bring this Olat every Shabbat, Al Olat HaTamid V'Nisko, on, literally on the Olat of the Tamid and its libation. So when I see this Lashon of Al Olat HaTamid, what does that mean, Al Olat HaTamid? That there, I bring, I do the Korban Musaf, Al Olat HaTamid, what does that mean? I'm assuming it means immediately following or basically the same time, like consecutively with. Consecutively, but, uh, or to put it maybe, um, uh, maybe a little more simply, Tamid would mean along with the Olata Tamid. So, um, but, but it does imply a, it, it, it's reasonable to say what you're saying, but it implies an order. So, Olat Shabbat v'Shabbato al Olat Tamid. So, what what would the order be? Which do you do first, the Olat Shabbat or Olat Tamid? Olat Tamid. Right. So that's that would be the the implication. It uses this language of al Olat Tamid. So you do the Olat Shabbat v'Shabbato al Olat Tamid on we might say in English, on top of the Olet Tamid, which you've already done. So then we bring, uh, then the Psukim uh, are the Musaf uh, of Rosh Chodesh. And how does that end off? Uh, in a similar way, the series in the Chad B'chata B'Hashem, Al Olat Tamid Yehaseh Nisko. So also the Korbanot Musaf uh, of Rosh Chodesh are done al olat tamid. Then I come to Pesach, the first rego. So then I, it tells me the various korbanot that I have to bring for the korban musaf of Pesach. And how does that parsha end? Um, al al olat tamid benisko. No. Exactly not. So that this is where it's this is where it changes. So what does it say? It brings all of the korbanot musaf, and then it also ends off usir chatat echad lechaper lechem milvad olat haboker asher liolat hatamid tasu etele aside from olat haboker the lashon changes. Milvad olat haboker asher liolat haTamid tasu et ele, and then it said you do these things aside from olat haboker. It still will imply the order that we had thought that we understood earlier. It's going to imply that you'll do this besides the olat haboker which you have already done, the olat haboker which is the olat haTamid. Tasuet Eile, you'll do these, and that you'll do these Musafin that are for Pesach. It goes on to say, Pasuk Kavdal, Ka'ele Tasula Yom Shivat Yamin. You'll do as these every day for seven days. Lechem Yishereh Mechal Hashem, Al Olat Atamid Yaseven Yisko. Then it repeats that Lashon of Al. But the Milvad is, uh, is a change in language. So, Rabbi Akiva, he understands that this Milvad Olat Boka tells me that you do the Korbanot Musaf for the Regalim right after you do 
the Korban Tamid Shel Shachar. And I'm going, and even though uh, this is talking about Pesach, and you might say it's only about Pesach, or you might extend and say it's only about Pesach and the Regalim, but I'm going to learn out from that for Yom Kippur as well. That's what Rashi, that's what Rashi means. This is what Rashi is saying. In Tamid Shel Shachar, that here back, in Yoma, on Yom Kippur, he brings the par ha'ola v'shivat klasim in tamid shel shachar, when he's wearing uh, the clothing of the Bitezah for the first time. Shenemar b'musfei kol ha-rigalim. It says regarding the musafim of all the rigalim, milvad olata boker, asher yolata tamid. Alma, that teaches us musafim Im olat haboker naset. It should be nasim. The samuch lahem. Oh no no, I'm sorry. It is naset. Alma musafim. Im olat haboker naset. The samuch lahem. It's a little bit confusing, but you do the musafim with the olat haboker. You'll know the yom hakipurim mehem. And then you, you, we learn what to do on Yom Kippur in this regard from them, from the Regalim. So just like in the Regalim, I do the Musafim right after Tamid Shal Shachar, Rabbi Kiva says, I'm also going to do the Musafim of Yom Kippurim right after Tamid Shal Shachar. <coughs> Except that, of course, we're still, he's still going to split it up because he's going to have the Sirana Sebechutz which is also one of the korbanot musaf. He's going to do that later, and that that's why he has to bring a second pasuk to prove that. So that's how he goes on. So first he does tamid shachar, um, and the uh, and then he does the parva olav shivat klasim, the harkach avodat hayom. I'm back in Rashi. The harkach avodat hayom. The harkach siyur naseh bechutz. The af al pishu who mina musaf, even though the siyur nasebuchut is also a korban musaf, and I just got finished saying that I was supposed to do the korbanot musaf right after the tamid shel shachar. Lo yachol lahakdimo la avodavu, excuse me, avodat hayom. He can't do it prior to doing what we're calling now avodat hayom. And the avodat hayom again is when he's wearing the bitei lavan. And he does this par, the seir, the chatat, and sprinkles their blood in the Kodesh, Kodeshim, and the Kodesh. He can't do the seir na'aseba chutz prior to having done avodat hayom. Why? The fishin'e amar bo, the seir chatat echad, milvad chatat ha-kipurim. Lamadu she seir chatat ha-pnimi kedamo. The kadmo. Um, so that's quoting from the next parak here in still in Parshat Pinchas. When we look at the Korban Musaf of Yom of Yom Kippurim, when I look at the Korban Musaf of Yom Kippurim, so what does it say? It brings the. Uh, it tells me I have to bring the. Uh, and this ayel, I'll just interject, right? Remember this ayel, we identify this ayel with the el ha'am that's mentioned in Achare Mot. It's going to be treated separately. So the main thing that we're concerned about are things that we're concerned about are the par ha'ola and the shivat kvasim, which are also olot. And then at the end of the of this parsha, it says Sirizim Achad Chatat Milvad Chatat Kipurim. So just like Milvad earlier meant that the Milvad means that I'm going to do this now after I've already done what I'm mentioning, right? So before it meant first I had to do the Korban Tamid and then I would bring the Musaf. Here it says 
Sirizim Echad Chatat. This is our Sir Hanaseh Bechutz, because it's a Sir Chatat that was, whose blood uh, was not brought inside to be sprinkled. It was sprinkled on the Mizbech HaFitzoni, and it was brought on the Mizbech HaFitzoni, HaFitzon. Sirizim Echad Chatat, Nilvan Chatat HaKippurim. This was brought aside from Chatat HaKippurim, the Olat HaTamid, Umin Chatat HaNiskehem. So this is giving us a, the, 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 the order in reverse. So you bring the Sira Zimachad Chatat, that's the Sira Naseh Bechutz, that's brought aside from Chatat Kippurim, which is in itself brought after the Olat HaTamid. So what's the Chatat Kippurim? This is Sira Zimachad Chatat, it's the Sira Naseh Bechutz, that's the uh, it's also, a, it's a chatat, but it's, it's a korban musaf. This is brought besides chatat kipurim. So what's chatat kipurim? What other korban chatat did we bring today? I'm sorry, I was distracted momentarily. Um, that's okay. Like I say, it's it's a lot for us to keep in our head. What what were the korban? What was the what what other chatat did I bring today? There was a par and another sayer. Right. So when it says milvad chatat kipurim, it's going to refer to another chatat that I was that has already been brought today. So it's going to refer either to the par or more likely it's going to refer to the sir chatat that's mentioned in Achremot. Right. So here I see from this pasuk, this pasuk is depending on you knowing the information that the Torah tells us in Achremot. Milvad chatat kipurim v'olat tamim. And Rashi says. Nilvan Khatata Kipurim, Sira Nase Bifnim, Kamur Bir Achremot, Shigamhu Khata. So what do I learn out from this? Rabbi Akiva is saying, what I see is why, according to me, according to Rabbi Akiva, you would argue that I should bring all of the Korbanot Musaf in the morning after the Korban Tamid, because I'm learning out from that Pasuk that that says by the Regalim, Milvad Olat right? right? So it, that the Korbanot Musaf should be brought after you bring the Korban Tamid. And as Michael said, it seems to imply consecutively that that should be the next thing you do. So based on that, I said, yes, in the morning you do the Korban Tamid, and then you do the Par HaOla and the Shivat Krasim of Ola that are the Korban Musaf. Why did I separate out the korban chata, uh, the seir chata, the seir nasebachut, and have it done later? Because the Torah says about that seir, seir is in the chat chata, that's the seir nasebachut. I do that aside from chatata kipurim, the olata tami. I do that besides chatata kipurim. In other words, I do it after I've already done the seir chata. Whose blood is going to be sprinkled So I have to do that first. So that's why it's interrupted by Avodatayom. Avodatayom is exactly that. It's bringing the Har Chatat and the Sir Chatat. So that's how Rabbi Akiva understands that verse. Right? So that's, the, that's why he needs this second Pasuk. He needs the pasuk of Sirius uh, Yimachad uh, Chatat Nuvad Chatat Kipurim. He needs that because otherwise, from his first Nilva, Nilvad Alat the Boker, Shirley Alat the Tamid, I would do all of the Korbanot Musaf right after the Korban Tamid. But now I know, no, first I'm going to have to do the Sir Chatat, the Sir Lashem, the Sir Hamasabitim. <coughs> so then, okay, so we've taken care of that. And then 
אחר כך אלו ואל העם, ואחר כך אמורי חטאת, כל אלו בטבילה שלישית. He's going to do all of these on the third tevila. That, and again, if you look back at my chart, one second. Right, the tzvi, so, so what does he do? He did Tamid, he did the beginning, the part, the part of the Klasim of the Musa. Then he did Tzvila uh, Shtimiya, and he did the Avodat, what, the, what this Brayta is calling Avodat Ayyam, which is the Avodat that's done with Naivalifim. And then Tzvila Shlishit, now that he did the Sir Chatat La'am, right, the Sir of the Sir Anaseh Bifnim, now he'll do the Sir Anaseh Bechutz. And then after that, he can continue to do Elo Ve'el Ha'am, El HaKohen Ve'el Ha'am. V'chakach Elo Ve'el Ha'am, V'chakach Elo Ve'el Ha'am, that's according to Rashi. That seems to be Shutoshalinya. But he's still in the third Tvila, wearing the big days I have, and that's when he does all the rest of his Kodanot. So Rashi says that actually, the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yes, Rashi says that. Tamid Shabbat Arbaim, he does Bitzvila Hamishit, not actually the way I put it in my chart, but we understand, and Rashi is going to explain himself, because it's not entirely clear, though, when is he doing the Korban Tamid, because, because why? Because we learned in the Mishnah, um, give me a second. we learned in the Mishnah, the way it's brought down in the Mishnah itself, it sounds like um, that might have that 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 the korban tamid might have been done but to be lashli sheet. In other words, it, it, I hope this is clear, right? We just Rabbi Akiva is explaining. Okay, we did the first two parts of the musaf in the morning. Then we did avodata yom. Then he did the last part of the musaf, which is sir nasabachutz. Then he did elo ve'el ha'am. And in the, in the Mishnah, what did it say? Uparho la basir na se bechutz, a yukraibim in tamid shoben arbaim. They were brought with the tamid shoben arbaim. So I would think that it means that he continued on and did the tamid shoben arbaim. And that would also make sense in the sense that as the Mishnah progressed, then he changed into Bidei Lavan, he took out the Kafa Mahta, he changed back into the Bidei Zahav. And what Mishnah says is, the Nichnas Akhtir Ktor Chabain Arbaim, the Tiva Tanilo. It doesn't say that with the Tvilacha Mishit, that only now does he do the Korban Tamid. So I would think it's implied that he did the Korban Tamid during the Tvilash Lishit, when he was wearing the Bidei Zahav for the Tvilash Lishit. So Rashi says, though, that's not the case. Rashi says, uh, tamid in other words, Rashi says, not immediately after, but rather after he's already changed in the Big Day Lavan and brought out the Kafa Machtan, changed back to the Big Day Zahav, then he does the Korban Tamid Shobain Arbaim. Lo ayri hachabotzat kafu machta. It's it's not talking here. It's, he doesn't include in this order. He doesn't add in that he had to change his clothes in between to take out the kafu machta. The pshita la the batar elove el haanti kintanyil kaman because that's obvious to us that that has to be done after elove el haan as we'll learn in the brayto later. Shakal Parsha Namrala said, right, the, we'll learn that later. That's later on in the Sunya. Yeah, that's where the Gemara says that all of Parsha Tarekharimot was said in order, except for the one Pasuk where it says that he goes into the Kodesh Kodeshim and takes his clothes off and leaves them there, which is what we associate with 
taking out the kaf of the machta. So this is Rashi Shita, which is uh, which is that the korban tamid shalbena arbaim was done after hotzak kaf machta and after he did the fifth tvila, and he goes back in, and that's um, and that's not how I put it in my chart. I put it in my chart the way we. The, like the Shutel Shelling and the way you would read the Bright so without Rashi's commentary. But um, I'll make another version with Rashi. Okay. Um, are there any questions? So I'm not sure if I understand. In fact, I don't understand what's at stake in these different streams. I understand it was a reading of a particular passage. But I don't understand. Like, is, I mean, what's what's the what? I'm assuming there's some larger issue, and I don't, I don't know what it is. Okay, so that that that's sort of the but that's the meta question. Like, what difference does it make? So I did remind us as we were going along the way that the Mishnah says earlier, uh, if you do the. Uh, of Odata Yom out of order, then Lo Asaklum, right? So one of the questions we have there is this, this is related to Michael's question. One of the questions we have there is what specifically does it mean by Avodata Yom? Does it mean all of the Avodah that was during, that, done that day, including the Korbanot Tamir and Musaf? Or does it just, it, it, that the Mishnah that's brought there after he did the sprinkling of the blood, which of course that got very intricate, uh, how he did the blood inside and how he did the blood on the Negada Parofin and on the Nizmeth, and, and he had to do the par before he did the Seir and, and all of that. So that's one question. But even there, so the mission doesn't say, even there, it doesn't say the why, what difference does it make there? What difference does it make if he did it out of order? And now we have this question, the larger question that Michael's asking is, okay, and here we, we're going into a lot of detail, we're going into a lot of trouble, and there's an actual machloka between Rabbi Yezer and, the, and uh, Rabbi Akiva about the specific order of these korbanot, but what difference does it make? What difference does it make? So, uh, or I sh I'm not sure if I'm asking a question, right, but there's two questions. One is, what is the basis for saying that it, that it has to be done in a particular order? And then what difference does it make? So we understand according to, according to Rabbi Akiva, he's basing his order on the proof text that we've brought. We haven't yet explained Rabbi Eliezer, but the well, Gemara is gonna explain for Rabbi Eliezer that the basis is that he reads Parshat Achremot he wants to do Parshat Achremot in order, the way it's brought down in Achremot. And if you, if you read it more Pashut, the way, then, then you'll, you'll come to something like Rabbi Eliezer's order. So what difference does it make? The simple answer is, this is how the Torah says it, even though there's a Bachlok about what the Torah is saying, but this is how the Torah says it. Beyond that, I think it's food for thought, and I'm going to stop now because it's nine o'clock. Uh, but I do, I do want to talk about that. I'll just throw in as food for thought. This doesn't answer Michael's question, and we're not going to answer it right away. And we'll have to think about if we can come up with an answers on our own. But I do want to point out that <clears throat> sometimes uh, the linear order of things, the uh, chronological order, is inherent to the mitzvah. So as a sofer, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, when I write tefillin and mezuzot, I have to write each letter in order. If I write one letter out of order, then all the other letters after it are pasu. It's as, and it's as if I didn't write them for any halachic purpose, right? So. The idea of kasidran is, is integral to the mitzvah of writing the tefillin and the mezuzot, which is not true of writing a Sefer Torah. Sefer Torah, I could write 
in any order I want. I could start from the end and write the whole thing backwards, or I can start from the middle. It doesn't matter. I can write it in any order I want. Um, and here, there's something about the chronological order which does seem to be inherent to the process. So I think the one of the ways that you might come to answer the question is you have to break down each of the korbanot and understand what we're accomplishing with each of them. So one quick thing to, that to think about also is, is exactly this last proof text that Rabbi Akiva brings, where the Torah does seem to go out of its way to say, milvad chatata uh, kippurim, right? So that, that I can't bring the, um, I cannot bring the seer nasabuchut, I can't bring the seer of the, uh, Korban Musaf of Yom Kippur until I brought Chatata Kippurim. So there is some, there's something going on there. And also, as we pointed out a few weeks ago, when we were doing this, even before I get to that Pasuk, where, where it says Milvat Chatata Kippurim, for whatever reason, the Torah itself has divided up the Par, the Ayel, and the Shivat Kvasim, which are all Olot, and then it discusses their menachot and their mesachim, and then it, and only then does it bring series in the chatchatan, which is a recurring theme with all the korbanot of Musaf. <clears throat> so the Torah is implying that the order is important, that you can't do one thing before the other. So the question is, why not? And so there, I'll leave it. I'll leave it for now. But we'll have to come. We'll have to revisit this uh, this question. So if it's okay with everybody, we're going to press on in the sugya next week, because I would like you to see this, even though it, it's a little complicated. I'm going to try to finish up my charts and stuff and send everything out in advance, but you know me, it may not, it may not work, but I'll do the best I can. Uh, Bezrat Hashem, I'll see you next week. And then in two weeks, um, it'll be uh, Purim. Uh, at least here in the States. And um, so we won't meet the following week. And then hopefully the week after. Okay. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.